These mould bargains pretty substantial. I don't, it feels like it feels decent actually. I just know that moulds like this tend to go brittle after a period of time. But it was it was a bargain. I Hi again folks. Right, we're gonna do the next in my B series. So as you can see, I've got the next of these Timu bargain moulds out. It's got two Bs. I'm planning to use similar colours to what I used last time. So I've got uh, gold and I've got black and I've got the shimmery colour that I used for the wings, which is like a holographic thing. So if anybody hasn't seen the other B video, uh, the first one in this series, then I will pop you a link. Um, it'll be up at the top of the screen somewhere up here. Right, here we go. Let's crack on. Now, Timu has just landed in the UK and uh, I'm mightily impressed by their stuff so far. For the price, particularly, you know, it's not it's not one of these massively high quality moulds that's going to last you forever, but it's decent. So, let's get on in. I'm going with some of my old nail art powders here and some of them are newer. Um, you see I've got a nice green for the leaves. Um, I've also got some glitter because we've got some flowers here, so I want to do something funky with the flowers, I think. But yeah, um, nail art powders. Never underestimate nail art powders, folks. So, what I'm finding so far with this mould then, that's quite easy just to pick out the highlighted high, pop, high points, but I've just decided to go back to how I normally do it um, for these sort of moulds. And that is put in the colour that I want in the lowest point first. Now those who've seen my previous video on this, uh, on the previous mould will know that I did the highlights first like I just did there. This is the alternative. If you've got a colour that you want to go into the back of the, the mould, the, you know, to be the, in this case, the little bees stripes, you can plaster it in first like so. I'll do the same with the wings. And then all you do is you wipe off the stuff you don't want. Oh, I've actually gone into the wrong area there. <laughs> Let's get it down his legs too. Let's do all of him. Antenna. Yep, wings. Here we go. We're over here doing the wings. Let's get his head. Let's get his leggies. And then I'm just going to go around and rub out what I don't need. Now, all you need to be able to remove the surface that you've decided you don't want is a wet cloth. Now, you can use a baby wipe for this. Many of you will know I'm, I'm not a fan of baby wipes. That's just because I don't like the smell. Not that there's anything wrong with them. So if you want to use your baby wipes, go for it. <laughs> I'm using Wonder Wipes. I'll put you the link for these below. I've got a funny feeling it's basically made, it's, it's basically uh, impregnated with alcohol, these wipes. It's something like that. If, I could read the box, of course, that'd tell me, wouldn't it? <laughs> but I find them very good. And if they dry out a bit while I'm using them, easy peasy, I just give them a squirt with some alcohol spray. Let's uh, be brush gone. There we go. So as you can see, I'm just wiping off everywhere it's got that I didn't want it to be. B. Did you see what I did there? B. Anyway. Now I'm going to be filling this with black resin afterwards. So anywhere that I've ended up with black around the sides, I'm not too bothered. But you see what's going on here? I'm just wiping out the surplus because that's where I'm going to be putting my yellow and on the wings, sort of that holographic sort of silvery effect. So that is a quick way of getting into all the surfaces. The other method, as I said, that's what I did last time. 
Um, last time I used the other B mould, I did the highlighty areas first. But this time I decided to do it this way after all. Now, a bit of it, I've gone a bit too keen there and wiped away a bit I shouldn't have done. So I'm just going to let it dry because of course my cloth was damp. I'm just going to go back in and do it again. Nice and easy. A little bit of black into those lines. And we'll have another go. I just got a bit too keen with the wiping it away there, that's all. Because with this one as well, I've got this space here. I might not want to go in completely with black resin. Just thinking out loud here. Looking a little bit closer at the design of the mould and thinking, hmm. There we go, that'll do. So I've got bits of black in there, but the gold will come through. OK, so while I'm still thinking about that, let's go in with the gold next. And this time I'm using a brush. Just to show you, you can use brushes or you can use the little applicators. So this one's a paintbrush. The last one was a, um, a makeup brush. And I'll use the little applicators in a minute just to show you what that looks like and use too. Now I could have done these in a slightly deeper gold so they look more like honeybees because they're slim ones. If they, if you do too much yellow, they look a bit like wasps, which isn't quite so attractive, is it now? <laughs> but never mind, I wanted the contrast really to the uh, honey. Right now look, I'll just show you the applicators. This is just an eyeshadow applicator. I wanted nice yellow centres on the flowers. So I'm just using that it might be a bit easier to be accurate, I don't know. I'm getting it where I shouldn't still. It's kind of what I do. <laughs> there, I think that's that. Now those little fine lines that are going to be the green, I think that's going to be tricky too, isn't it? I'm going to get me another cloth out, I think, because that one's got a bit mucky. Got plenty of them. I'll buy the wonder wipes in big buckets. <laughs> okay, that'll do. A little bit of a wipe around there. Yeah, now I've decided I'm going to go green in this line and in these little fine bits of flower, which it looks like I've gone into where I shouldn't. Again, getting my wipe in there. There we are. These are micro brushes, folks. Just like very tiny cotton buds. Really handy for all sorts of things. Don't forget, all the links will be down below. If anybody hasn't has been struggling to find links, I've had people asking me, saying, where are these links? I can't see any links. If you go to the description below this video, and any of my videos, you'll see I've put links for the things that I use in the video and a couple of things that I just use all the time so I think you should know about them. Um, I try not to fill it with links for things not used in the video but used in other videos simply because I don't want to clutter you up. But when I eventually get a proper Amazon storefront I should just be able to put one big link I think for everything that's in there and leave you to have a rummage. I think that kind of works. Right, this is the iridescent silver going in. You'll see it's got bits of gold in the wings as well. Not too worried. There we are. Now, yes, the green. This is going to be fun because it's so fine in these bits. Um, I have got... This brush is quite thin, so I'm wondering if I can get in there. I could use the micro brush or I've got this one. I don't know. The easy answer I think is going to be, now I've got the bees all covered in the colour I want them to be, will be just to go in with a brush and then wipe off the surplus afterwards again. So this green is gorgeous. 
again a nail part a nail art powder and uh, yeah it's going to go everywhere look it is a nail art powder I'll put you the link for this it's part of a set and I know they're available um, on in the US and uh, most places so I got this from the British Amazon obviously because I use British Sorry if I'm still sounding a little bit odd when I talk, by the way. I'm, I'm going to be having dental work done for about the next four months. So um, there will be times when my, I might sound a little bit, you know, not quite my usual self. It'll be worth it when it's all done. Oh, this is surprisingly easy. Okay. Well, as you can see, I decided to do this rim all the way around here in the green, too. Because it appears to be kind of an extension of the flower stalks. I think this green is going to be gorgeous against the black. So I think you probably have seen the routine before. When you use mica powders to colour your, your uh, mould and then, you know, follow up with your some legs there uh, yeah and then follow, you follow up with resin on the back um, what we typically do is use black resin so I'll end up with a black background here but these colors will just all show straight through no problem I've got all the legs now yeah there we go so next is a cleanup job but actually I oh, know actually let's get the flowers done next quite excited about the little flowers because I want to put a little bit of glitter in them so I'm going to get my sticky tweezers I think it's a bit sticking to the end of them <laughs> from my previous project bits of glitter and I'm just going to plonk a bit of glitter in the middle now that isn't going to show through that um, there we go that isn't, isn't going to show through the pigment, so I'm just going to push it out. That's kind of what I wanted. Just a little bit of a sparkle. Now I'm going to be pushing this around with the mica in a minute, so I need to make sure i got it stuck down, don't I? But I'm hoping this glitter will mix with the mica. not tried it before. Oh, not too much there. Never mind. Let's get a bit of it back out and pop it in the first one. Actually, will it stick to my glove? Yeah. Let's do that. These gloves are a bit too big. I didn't realise what small hands I'd got until I realised that I needed small gloves, which I would have thought were child sizes when I looked at them, but hey. Right, clean up job. These gloves are mediums. <laughs> and they're too big. To the next pack soon. I've ordered smalls in the next pack. So this cleanup job, I'm not going to panic too much if there's a little bit of glitter got somewhere where it shouldn't or whatever. There's a little bit missing from in there. This is the fun bit. I, I find this bit ever so therapeutic. And it's the bit that gives it the drama too, once you uh, demould it. Have I missed any other bits? This bit looks a bit insipid. Let's get a bit more in there. There we are. So all that's left to do, where are we? Let's see. Um, Still going to do the rest of the flowers. They're so well recessed, you could actually do the uh, the pour in two parts as well. But I like to get it. I like to crack on and get it done. You know. Right. Let's see if the pink will go in. I've got a deep pink. When I say go in, I mean go in over the um, 
glitteriness that I've got going on here. I'll probably I'll probably end up moving the glitter around. But that's okay. Now I'm doing this with the brush this time because I do want to get in to the little grooves. appears to be happening is I'm pushing the glitter back into the middle. <laughs> A bit of it will come through I'm sure. I should have used the glitter that will stick to the mould better. Let's push it back out. I don't know whether any of that's going to show through or not really. But hey. Right now the remaining two flowers I'm going to do in a paler pink. Now next time I do one of these moulds there will be a hummingbird involved. Now we all know that hummingbirds tend to be beautifully iridescent. So I'm going to do a hummingbird and flowers. Now I know there's no bees in that and I'm doing bee theme but I've got this beautiful hummingbird and flowers mould from this uh, same Timu order that I'm dying to do. And with that one I'm going to try blending the colours of the mica powders. So look out for that video coming soon to a YouTube channel near you. <laughs> This is so pretty, this uh, this pink, it's almost silvery. Lovely. Right, now what we've got left, we've got the honey left, then a final wipe over, and then we just go in straight in with black resin. Now this is like a honey colour that I mixed up when I made the previous one of these, and it is a bit of gold and a little bit of like a, an orangey copper colour. And yeah, this mould like the previous one I used for honeycomb effect is proving to be easy because the shape of it you just follow it around with your brush. And you don't have to worry if you're getting this last colour onto the black bits because of course the powder that's against the mould is what you're going to see. So the black will show straight through. I noticed there's a little bit of black there missing. So I'm just going to go back in with a little bit there. <laughs> Give it a wipe. Don't know why I'm bothering because that's going to be black anyway because that's where the black resin's going to go. Right, where was I? Back in with the gold. So this is a seriously easy project really. All you need is some mica powders. Now you could use um, you know, proper resin mica powders. Actually that's what the gold originally was before I, before I mixed a bit of uh, copper with it to make this sort of more of a honey colour. Or if you just want little pots um, you can try the nail art ones. Of course you can use holographic ones. You could use all sorts. Just go crazy. This here just goes to show you can mix mica powders up to get different colours if you want as well. You can really can experiment and play with them. Well there we go. Um, let me just put this down. We're going to do one last little clean. I will get another wipe. I'm going to tip this upside down and tap it out as well. I don't always bother. Now I've got it all over my sticky mat. Um, I don't always bother, but um, I think with this I did want to get get the surplus out. So I'm just giving it a quick wipe round the rim here. Last quick wipe over the surface because I want this honeycomb to be a really nice sharp shape. So 
just a quick once round like that. And my next job, other than having a blooming good clear up, is it's all this glitter. <laughs> so if you can see that, can you see that? I've got glitter everywhere. So yeah, the next job will be to clean up, but first of all, let's get that resin mixed. Now the resin I'll be using will be, I'm still using up the last of my resin from um, Let's Resin. So we will use that. I've got another big silicon pot to hand. This is a nice large one, so I can mix up lots. Now the resin is just a one-to-one, -one, so nice and easy. I'm going to put a big dollop in. There isn't this. I'm not just eyeballing this, by the way, folks. There is a measure on the side of this. Um, but yeah, I'm doing a one-to-one because -one it's tracy-proof. Doesn't make my brain hurt too much mixing it up. Now I'm not sure whether that's going to be quite enough. We shall soon see. Right, just because it's pretty boring watching somebody just mixing resin, I'm going to fast forward this. The pigment you will see me drop in is the Vuba Vista Colours. There we go. Actually, I might as well do it now. You only need a tiny bit. In fact, that's probably too much. <laughs> So I should be mixing that in. It's a very dense colour. You don't want more than 10%, no matter how much you put it with any liquid pigment colouring for resin, because it will stop it curing. But hey, look at that. Just thinking I might drop a bit of black glitter in it or something as well. But there you go. So I'll fast forward this, and um, then we can watch me pour it in. And of course, at that point, you'll also be able to see how it all behaves and how the balls all pop. Okay, so I'm back and as you can see stirring away you want to stir your resin I always do it too quickly really for videos because I'm always too impatient and I want to crack on with it um, which does mean I end up with bubbles and things um, really you want to stir it for a good two or three minutes a bit longer if possible and uh, slowly I will stir far too fast now what you'll have seen is I put a bit of glitter in it I also put a bit of that shimmer powder you can't really see it too much, but I just didn't want it to be pure solid black. And you can see there's just a tiny bit of shimmer to the surface. I might see this better when it's all poured out. Because of course with this mould you are going to see the black. Very often you use mica powders and that's you know you don't see the, the black going on behind it. It just makes the colours ping, that's why you use black. And you only see the black if you actually turn it over. This one you are actually going to see the black. Just notice that because I put my pot on there, I had disturbed some of the... There we go, some of the mica. So it was just because I was trying to keep the pot in shot for you. <laughs> right, and then all we do... Is we pour. Now, if there isn't enough here, I can mix some more up in a sec. It's not far off by the look of it. Yeah, it's a bit deceptive. So I'll mix a bit more up anyway and carry on pouring. And then really, there's nothing to do until we do the demold. So I'll be back and see you for that. Okay, here we go with the demold. It's a bit of a teaser as well. Here's the next one. I've <laughs> got loads of funny things going on around here that are for the next videos coming up. I like doing several at once, so here we go. This is still very slightly bendy. Probably should still have my gloves on. Oh dear. Do some serious hand washing straight after. Excited by this one after the success of the last one. I hope it doesn't let me down. Okay, the mould come away nice and cleanly. Oh, that's interesting. Look, it's stained the mould slightly. Doesn't matter though. That'll still be fine. Right, here we go. Look how pretty the back is. Isn't that nice. 
<laughs> where all the mica powders have come up. And here we go. Oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> that is lovely. Really pleased with that. Um, so looking at this, the one that's stained the mould is the flowers. The, the darker ones are the flowers. But the colour blending there has worked. And I love the green against the black. And I also like how this part of the black is kind of satin finished. Some of the colour seems to have escaped, which is a bit of a pity. I thought I'd got all that off. Yeah, you can see where there's bits on the black that shouldn't be. But what I say, <laughs> mega pleased with that. That is lovely. Do a bit of a close up in, in here, look. Thinking these would make nice house numbers. Don't know where you'd put the number. But it is the sort of thing that go nice on your wall. It's just a shame that resin isn't great for outdoors. But there we go. Thanks for watching, everyone. And uh, I'll see you all for the next video, which is just to tantalise your taste buds a bit. This one is coming up. You see, this is still very, yeah, <laughs> very not cured. I only did that a few hours ago. So that'll be next, along with a little bunny. And more bee stuff, of course. See you all soon.